Hi, I'm Ovidius. In this guide, I'll show you the basics of web scraping and data parsing with Beautiful Sue. I'll also share a few tips to keep in mind while web scraping, so stay till the end, you don't want to miss them. Yes, Beautiful Soup is a pretty beautiful parsing tool, and here's why. It makes the poorly formed HTML data workable, so you don't have to scratch your head figuring out how to fix the structure or syntax. It also creates a parsing tree, which is extremely beneficial in web scraping. Beautiful Soup can parse data using Python tools, such as LXML or HTML5lib, with the choice being in your hands. So you can simply switch them up for a different parsing strategy. Beautiful Soup is called after tag soup, a term in web development referring to structurally or syntactically incorrect HTML. Back in the day, available parsers could only parse well-structured HTML data, leaving behind incorrectly formed HTML. All that changed with the introduction of parsers able to detect and improve HTML errors, including Beautiful Soup back in 2004. And thus, it has stayed beautiful since then. To start scraping, we need to have the necessary packages installed. We'll use pip, a Python package management system. You should also set up a Python programming environment of your choice, like PyCharm, before moving on. First, we're going to be installing the Python request package, which will allow us to fetch any web page. As usual with pip, we open a terminal and run pip install requests. Once we fetch the content from a website, we'll need to parse it. This is where the beautiful soup package comes in. Install it by running pip install as well. Then we'll need to, the pandas library to save the scrape data into a CSV file. Run pip install pandas. Now we're ready to start web scraping. Stick to the end of this video to learn how to scrape a website using Python, how to parse the scrape data using beautiful soup, how to export parse data to a CSV file, and the three things to keep in mind while scraping with Python and beautiful soup. Let's begin the fun part, web scraping. We're going to use a dummy website called books.toscrape.com as our first scraping target. First, we're going to download a page. We're going to be using functions from the requests library, so we'll import this first. Once that's done, we'll be using the library's get function to fetch a page from our target website. Once we retrieve the response, we recommend checking whether the request was successful or not by verifying the status code property. We can also print a message that tells us whether the page was fetched successfully. Now, we can execute the script in a terminal. As you can see, the requests module has retrieved the HTML content from the website and we can finally start parsing it. We're going to show you how to search for HTML tags, which is extremely important. So the first thing we want to do is to look at the HTML structure. We want to know which tags describe the data we are actually interested in. Without doing this step, we can't write code that would parse the exact data we require. The document object model allows us to see a tree structure of the web page's HTML, which is a logical representation of the data provided within it. We can usually find it in a browser with developer tools. On browsers like Chrome and Firefox, you can do that by opening the browser menu, then clicking on more tools and selecting developer tools. Another common shortcut for this is right-clicking any element in, in the website and selecting inspect. As you can see, all of the information about a book on this page is neatly wrapped in an article tag. Uh, inside the article, there's a heading tag H3 that contains an anchor tag A, which contains the title of the book inside the anchor's attribute. To parse this HTML content, we'll use the Beautiful Soup library. First, import Beautiful Soup. Then, create an instance of the Beautiful Soup class and load the HTML content we've retrieved from the web page previously. Remember the article tag? Well, now is the time to retrieve all the articles that exist in the page. Next, define the titles list that will hold all the book names extracted from the current page. Now, iterate through every article to extract the title attribute of the previously mentioned anchor tag. Let's print it as well, just to see whether our script works. Let's run the script. You should see all the book titles in the script's output. Now, Printing everything to standard output can become messy at times. It would be much better if we save the data into a CSV file. Let's start by deleting the print function. Next, 
we have to create a data frame object, the primary data format for the pandas library. As with others, don't forget to import the pandas library. In the data frame constructor, we'll pass a dictionary that contains the name of the column, in this case, title, uh, and the list of titles that we previously parsed. The next step is to save the data frame to a file by using the to csv command. Let's run the script again. Use the cat unix command to print the csv file. As you can see, the newly created file now contains all the book titles from the web page. Now, the first thing to remember while scraping is that if the website's HTML content structure changes, your code might not work as it intended. This is because the parsing code is expecting a particular HTML structure. And so if the structure changes, your code might not find the relevant data anymore. So when you scrape a website for a longer period of time, and after some time you find that your script is failing, you might want to inspect the HTML structure of the website again. Secondly, make sure to scrape responsibly. Don't scrape websites that don't want to be scraped. You can find what robots can do on a specific website in the robots file by simply using the site's URL with robots.txt entered after the forward slash. For example, oxylabs.io forward slash robots.txt. And thirdly, you might want to consider using proxies. They are instrumental when doing large scale web scraping as many websites might block your IP, denying access to the whole site. To add to that, with proxies you can avoid geolocation restrictions and gather data from all around the world. Check out this great short video if you'd like to learn more about proxies and how to choose the one that suits your needs. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment about your web scraping experience. Thank you and until next time.